So, as you folks may know, uh, New York City DSA had a very good round of elections recently. Uh, we basically ran the board, winning almost every race we endorsed in, with the exception of Sam Belize Lopez in the Bronx, who was sadly defeated by one Richie Torres, right? You win some, you lose some. Now, I didn't know that much about this Richie Torres guy uh, before today, except for the fact that he uh, went behind the backs of the activists and organizers who were pushing for the Right to Know Act, which was a police reform act uh, designed to decrease the power of police, increase the power of civilians uh, to put, put, some, put some controls on the police, et cetera, et cetera. He went behind the backs of these people and um, made a backroom deal that, with the NYPD that weakened the act. So I didn't like him for that reason. Now we have another reason to dislike him. Um, so recently, he got on a Zoom call with Democratic Majority for Israel, which is a Zionist group, and he had some choice words for New York City DSA. And I should also say that this was obtained by Ryan Grimm, who is a reporter at The Intercept. I might be able to play it if uh, right. you need me to. Um, just let yeah. me know which one it is here. Okay, so is it the top one here? It's the bottom one. Or this one? Bottom yeah. one? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. First, it's an honor to be here with uh, Kathy. I'm looking forward to serving with you and, and, and Congressman Rax Rose. Uh, I have to say, no one in, in there's, no, there's been no member of Congress who has reached out to me more proactively and been mentoring me as much as Matt. So I, I'm just grateful to you and I, I thank you for your friendship. Uh, as to your question, whether I feel outnumbered, it's not so much outnumbered. I feel um, drowned out that, that in politics, uh, you know, there's no doubt in my mind there is a silent majority for Israel. But a visible vocal minority is often mistaken for majority and often has outsized influence over public discourse and public policy. And part of the problem is social media, uh, which has the effect of amplifying uh, the ideological extremes. You know, in New York City, you know, we've seen the rise of the Democratic Socialist of America, uh, which is explicitly pro BDS. Uh, the Democratic Socialist left endorsed in about 11 races and won every single one except mine. Uh, so it's proven to be effective at winning elections. And I worry about the normalization of, of anti Semitism uh, within progressive politics. Uh, I, I consider BDS the attempt to delegitimize Israel to be anti-Semitic at its core, and any movement that embraces anti-Semitism is destined to rot from within. You know, it strikes close to home for me as an openly LGBTQ person, because part of what it means to be LGBTQ is to live life with integrity and authenticity. And if the message to those who are both progressive and pro-Israel, especially people of Jewish descent, that in order for you to be part of the progressive community, you have to renounce your identity and your history and your ties to your own homeland, and you have to be in the closet. That, to me, is profoundly evil. That's a perversion of progressivism, and that's something that pro-Israel progressives have to fight against. And so it's incumbent upon us to create space within the progressive movement for pro-Israel voices. Wow. Where do I begin? So he speaks further in another clip about the need to build like institutions to support uh, pro-Israel Zionist candidates, I guess. And dude, there is an institution for those who support Israel and conflate any critique of Israel with anti-Semitism. It's called the Democratic Party. This thing called APAC. We'll give you a bunch of money. You're going to love it. So let's let's deal with some of the things he said here. Or do you want to watch? Should we you want to deal with that or should we watch this other clip first? I mean, I guess I kind of stepped on it just now by saying what they said and then saying what I think about what they said. But uh, play it if you like. Yeah, it's just... It was actually an, it just I was which I never told you. I was actually so nervous to meet you because I felt like, oh, my gosh, it was just it's almost it was just so beautiful and almost um, not otherworldly, but amazing the way you speak of, with such honesty and conviction about about Israel, U.S. Israel, 
relations and everything about that. It, it really is. Um, I just wish that we could clone you. So there were a million issues running around talking about uh, Israel. Any Here's a question from Mashulam. How do you build a new generation of pro-Israel progressive candidates across the country, say like how AOC has with the Justice Democrats? I mean, you need to build institutions. Um, the, like the institutional left is extraordinarily effective at recruiting candidates and training them and fundraising for them and, and building a whole infrastructure around them. Uh, the, the pragmatic progressive wing of the party needs to create its own infrastructure to recruit candidates, to fundraise for them, to provide them with institutional memory and expertise. Uh, what is desperately needed is, is infrastructure, right? If you're like a pro BDS leftist, there's a whole uh, industrial complex that exists to support you. But if you are pragmatic for Israel Democrat, you're often left to your own devices. <laughs> and, and so there needs to be an infrastructure that supports a pragmatic alternative to the extremes. Did you hear that, folks? The DSA has an industrial complex around pro D pro BDS uh, progressives, while the uh, quote unquote pragmatic progressives, all right, the uh, the pro Israel centrists have absolutely nowhere to go. They're politically homeless. They have no infrastructure, no support, no money from a thing called APAC. Like what? <sighs> so. Say what you want about the makeup of NYC DSA. And, uh, you know, you'll probably be right. We have no shortage of Jews in this organization. So what the hell is he talking about when he talks about how we're a bunch of rotten anti-Semites? Um, does it mean that we are in supporting BDS? We actually hate ourselves and we are renouncing our homeland, which is, you know, biblically declared, getting in the closet akin to gay people in a homophobic society and just, you know, saying we hate ourselves. What, what's going on here? Man, I mean, it, a simple um, uh, script to run is every time it says Israel, just replace it with South Africa and imagine it's like 35 mm -hmm. years ago. Um, here's a little, uh, here's, a, here's an alternative viewpoint in a few seconds. We identify with the PLO. Because just like ourselves, they are fighting for the right of self-determination. You're that extremist. That's right. Right. Like, this is really one of those times I wish Michael were here because he would absolutely demolish every single thing that this guy said. But um, yeah. I'm going to do my best. And I see you guys are as well. Um, the thing about BDS, all right? is we are recognizing Israel as a settler colonial apartheid state. And this movement has been modeled off of the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa. Um, and it is a, a state that regularly commits atrocities against the Palestinian people. And, you know, seeing as internationalism is a core tenet of our principles in NYC DSA and DSA as a whole, um, we're standing in solidarity with them, with this movement. Um, and as we try to do with oppressed people everywhere who are fighting for the right to self-determination. And in this case, the goal is ending the occupation and colonization of Arab Palestinian lands, um, ending the siege on Gaza, which is currently an open air prison and giving full rights to Palestinian citizens of Israel. Um, and importantly, a thing called the right of return, allowing Palestinian refugees to return to their homes that they were violently expelled from. And this right was outlined in the UN Resolution 194, and that has not happened yet. And P.S., my homeland is New York, so stop justifying the bad shit that Israel does in my name. And also, next time around, Sam Luis Lopez is going to run against this guy, and she's going to win. What do you guys think right. about all that? Right. No, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, to me, the easiest way actually to refute some of this stuff when it comes to these people is, you know, the, 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 those people who are questioning, like the, the constituents who are questioning uh, uh, him about uh, what could we do to, you know, usually these people are actually very anti-Trump, right? He's horrible. He's terrible. Well, if you don't like Trump, then you can't support 
you can't support Israel. There's no there's no state that that supports Donald Trump more than the Isra- than Israel because of the right wing far right wing government of Israel. Like we don't mm-hmm. even need to get into we don't need to deal with the history with the because people don't care about that stuff. Deal with like for me, my opinion, right, right. Deal with right here, right now. If you support current day Israel, then you support Donald Trump. It's that simple. Netanyahu supports Trump more than anyone else, even more so than Vladimir Putin. It's it's like, like I don't know what else to say. If you can't yeah. criticize Israel right now, then just go out there and vote for Donald Trump because that's what you're doing by defending what Israel does. Because there is no country, like even if you go and just ask the people of all these countries that you think supports Donald Trump, there's like one country where the overwhelming majority of the people in this country, because they've been propaganda, they've been brainwashed by their right wing government's propaganda over all these years, it's the Israel is Israel. It's Israel. Like you go to Russia and ask them what they think about Donald Trump. It's not even going to be as overwhelming as the of the positive view that people in Israel have for Donald Trump because of the right wing government. So you know, again, it's just that simple. If you support. If you don't if you don't support Donald Trump, then you can't support Israel. It, it, it's it's I don't know what to say. I think that's what it's part. like really frustrating to me. Like these people are out there going like Donald Trump is the worst thing ever to happen. What you're criticizing Netanyahu? It's like give me a break. Give me a break. <laughs> Understand how the world works and how all these different you know uh, right wing fascists work together. I mean, it's just that simple. Yeah, well, Netanyahu came like before Trump was even president when Obama was still president and spoke specifically to the Republican House. Like he's right, right, right. And Yair Netanyahu, that's his name, right? Uh, no, his son is doing yeah. like MAGA tours of the South. I think he's spoken like Tennessee or some some sort of religious um, convention. Just bizarre stuff. Yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 uh, Israel's totally on board the MAGA train. And yeah, yeah. I think to- that's a question Torres should be asked, actually. Well, and it's, funny too, it's funny, too, because I remember discussing this with Michael back in the day, how you never hear Democrats who support Israel talking about offering, offering any sort of support to the Israeli left. They don't care about the leftists in Israel at all who are actually... Yeah. Uh, living under this right-wing government for how many years now? Jeez. I mean, if you actually care about, if you're a Jewish person or not Jewish person like Torres, who cares about uh, Israel, then you should be working, and you're a Democrat or a leftist or a liberal or whatever, you should be working to help the people in Israel who are on the left, who have to live under this far right government. It's, I mean, it's mm-hmm. crazy how they can't understand there's a difference between the right wing government that's been ruling Israel and basically has become what the de facto of what Israel is today. Uh, and, you know, the people in Israel who, you know, many of them are not to blame because they are just just like American citizens who have been fooled by Donald Trump, who exactly. are just, you know, it's it's the same dynamic here. You're, you're going after like, I, I don't even it's just baffling. I don't even it's it's progressivism for me, but not for the right. Like it it makes no sense at all to call yourself a progressive or certainly a socialist and support the gov- the right wing government in Israel, which, you know, we hear a lot about the treatment of the Palestinians, which is incredibly horrendous, but also, you know, right wing austerity policies. And, you know, maybe they have a few gay clubs at Tel Aviv, which everyone likes to trumpet, but that's uh, that's not good enough. We need well, rights for everyone. And, uh, you know, I mean, with respect to Torres, he definitely isn't calling himself a socialist anymore or, or even an AOC style Democrat. But I don't know if this, what is it, pragmatic, moderate Democrat? Like, you're going to need to think of a better name for this, Richie, uh, for this little institution of yours. And by the way, when these institutions start do developing, anybody who doesn't have, like, a footprint online should start to, like, maybe try to infiltrate those for us because we would be much appreciative. Mm -hmm. Boom. Uh, 